Hello, hello, hello. We uh, hopefully are live. Well, I guess we're going to find out soon enough, aren't we? So hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. This is Friday, July 22nd. It's been a little while because I have been on vacation and I'm back and I'm kind of half awake and uh, figured, you know, good as time as any to get these things started again. Uh, I actually, uh, so the last trip that I was on, that was in Slovenia, that was for a family vacation. So I was hardly posting at all. Um, did keep up on the photoops.expert site reasonably well. Had a few posts going up there while I was gone. Um, but you know, I wasn't even shooting that much other than for my brother-in-law's wedding. So um, not the kind of stuff I was posting online. So I've been pretty dark for the last few weeks, but it's, uh, it's good to be back and good to be starting up the photo moments again. So today's photo moment is actually a question that came in from a, uh, from a viewer, one of my friends, a friend named Carl Short. So Carl, howdy buddy. Um, his question came in about the Lumix GX8, which he had recently purchased. And the question was that on the on the back of the GX8, and it's kind of hard. For, well, I'll just kind of show here, but you know, there's the buttons around the menu button on the back, up, down, left, right arrows. And on the GX8, by default, let's see, they are ISO on the top, white balance on the right, focus selection point on the left, and then on the bottom is a uh, is your uh, single shot, multiple exposure, switch to 4K photo mode, time, um, what do you call it, self timer, that sort of thing mode. Those are the buttons that are there by default. But somehow he had come into a situation where when he was pushing those buttons, all it was doing was moving the focus point. So let's see here, I've got this rigged up hopefully properly, there we go. And when he was pushing the, the center button, or the, the cursor buttons, you can see what's happening on the screen here, the focus point was moving and that wasn't what he wanted. He wanted to have the menus come up that the buttons are saying they're supposed to do. So I wasn't sure how he got there. Well, there is a setting inside of the, the camera settings, and this is going to be across all the Lumix cameras, where you can set whether the, those buttons are going to do their default purpose, so turn on ISO, white balance, and so on, or whether they're going to allow you to control the focus point like we just did here. And this isn't exclusive to Lumix cameras. You'll find this on a lot of cameras. Um, they might be called different things, of course, but you're going to find this pretty universally. Any camera that has the up, down, left, right arrows, you can use those buttons to either control the focus point or to do what their default setting is. So let's take a look at how to fix that since that of course was the question here. All right, so I'm gonna go into the main menu and just push the menu button, that's the center button on here, there it is, and you can see that's popped up. And so I'm gonna kinda of go through these. You see on the left hand side, you've got your controls. There's your camera controls, video camera controls, your custom settings, and then your setup controls and then playback. You're gonna find this under the custom setup. So that's the wrench with the C on it. And then I'm gonna go back to the top of the first page of this. You'll see on the very right, it says page one of nine and there's a bunch of pages here. And by the way, I'm, I'm navigating this using a combination of either using the cursor buttons to navigate or to the touch screen, because this is a touch screen. And if I scroll down, see to page three, there we go, the page three, let's look at the highlight right there. It says direct focus area and that's turned on. And if you have the help enable, you'll see at the top that it says enable the movement of the AF area using, it's a very slow help system, the, I don't know who timed these things, cursor button. Oh, that's funny, as I talk, it slows down because it's hearing the audio and having to process that. <laughs> anyway, using the cursor button. So that's turned on right now. If I turn that off, now that that's off, when I go back into the regular view and I hit the top of the up button, it brings up ISO as you would expect it to. I hit the right, it brings up the white balance. As I hit the left button, it brings up the autofocus mode and the bottom button brings up the drive mode. That's the word I was looking for before. So that is all there is to it. It is just a case of finding that function in there, the function that was called the direct focus area and turning that off. Somehow he had turned that on inadvertently or maybe thought it sounded like a good idea. Like why wouldn't you want to use those buttons to control it? Well, that's why, because then it takes away that function. Now, if this is the kind of thing that sounds like a good idea, you'd like to be able to do that, you can still get into that mode even while it's off. So let me just turn that back off, go back into this mode again. If I bring up the focus control, so that's I hit the left arrow, uh, the left button to bring up the focus controls. And let's just say that I was in this one area, because that's more, most likely where you'd be using it. So I'll hit it again and bring that up. And then you hit down, you see it says AF area. I hit down and now I can control it like this as well. And so you get that same kind of control. Of course, it's a few extra taps to get there. But what's spectacularly cool is that you can actually use your finger to drag these points around. And what I'm gonna show you, not in today's photo moment, but in another photo moment, what I'm gonna show you is how you can use the back screen 
like a trackpad, like you'd have a trackpad on your computer. While your, your eye is up to the viewfinder, you can use your thumb to run it around that screen to set the focus point. And that is one of the coolest features about this line of cameras, the Lumix cameras, and having that touchpad there, or that um, touchable screen there. So that's something I'm gonna cover in another photo moment. But for this one, just uh, to reiterate that, all you had to do, go into the menu and disable that direct focus area. That was the key, that's what was wrong there. So uh, that is that for today's photo moment. Let me just do a quick refresh here and see if there's any, uh, any comments on there. Uh, a couple people watching and I don't see any comments in there. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it at that. If you have any questions for a future photo moment, please just drop them right in here or contact me any other way. You can email me through the website or whatever you like, photoapps.expert, and we'll, uh, we'll address your question in a future photo moment. Otherwise, for now, we'll be back online on Monday. I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna talk about on Monday, but we'll figure it out before then and uh, we'll do that. All right, you guys, thanks a bunch. Um, if you have these kind of questions, like specific questions about the cameras, I think this is kind of a fun thing to be able to address in here, a very specific one feature. How does this work? Um, and it doesn't just have to be the Lumix cameras. If you have a general question about your Canon or Nikon or whatever, there's this function, this button, you're not sure what it does. Um, if you can't figure it out, you can let me know. If I don't have that camera, then I can probably look it up and, um, and we'll see if we can figure that out together. All right, guys, thanks a bunch for uh, hanging out today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.